Shanna, heard that I get. If you didn't see my review of Grey Zone, then please go and watch that as well because that's one I did entirely in Swedish. I'm not going to do that for this one, Quicksand, despite the fact that it is a Swedish series, because my thoughts around it are a little bit more complicated and nuanced, and I'd like to do the best review that I possibly can, even if that's in boring old English. Well, I mean, not old English, clearly, which would actually be even harder, and ironically, a lot closer to Swedish. Get on with it! Anyway, Quicksand is a Netflix miniseries based on a book called Stöstervalt by Swedish author Malin Persson Gilrito, who was born and raised in Jusholm, which from what I understand is an upper class area of Stockholm, and that is where the series is set. It is almost entirely in Swedish. In the first episode there is some English and French, but after that it's entirely Swedish and ooh, some nice Swedish too. And by the way, if you're learning or thinking of learning Swedish, then this series is probably the best one going around for Swedish learning. If you're already at a level where you can understand things without subtitles, then it's excellent. It's to do with the fact that it's a mix of different styles of Swedish, as well as the fact that it's entirely in Swedish. There's no Norwegian or Danish thrown in there. I haven't read the book because I'm trying to get my Swedish reading to the point where I can be like, No man, I only read stuff in the original Swedish because you just miss out on so much in translation. Shut up, hipster Lamont. Your Swedish isn't even that good. Yeah, whatever, man. My Swedish is awesome. I've done like almost all my Duolingo tree. But seriously, I haven't read the book in either Swedish or English. There is an English translation if you want to read it. But watching the series, I felt like a book would have given us a much better explanation of many things because it wasn't that anything was particularly poor or that it didn't make sense or even that it wasn't very convincing. It was just sort of all over the place. Like, it felt like back when DVDs, older DVDs, would occasionally just skip a layer and you'd go from a quarter of the way through the movie to halfway through the movie with no reason, or when you forget to turn shuffle off on an audiobook and it goes from chapter 3 to chapter 48. That's kind of what this series felt like. To be more specific, I mean the character Sebastian. We're supposed to be watching him go through this downward spiral where he goes from being this really rich, snobbish kid who is still kind of likeable, even though he just does whatever he wants, to being so insane that he's a danger to everyone around him and himself. And then there's Maya, his girlfriend and our main character, who goes from being head over heels in love with him to basically stopping him at any price. We're supposed to be watching that downward spiral, sort of for both of them, but it doesn't really seem to go in any order. It's not a spiral, it's just sort of random events. And as for Maya and her being in love with Sebastian, I couldn't really see why she liked him in the first place. She says something about how he could have chosen any girl, but he chose her. But then the way he behaves and everything that happens, I think you would have gotten rid of him so long ago. That's what I meant when I said that the book might have filled in some of that explanation for why characters behave the way they do. Because the strong sense I got in the series was that there was supposed to be quite a lot of time passing between certain scenes, but you never really feel that time. So maybe Maya and Sebastian have actually been properly in love and together for quite a long time before things start going south, and then you can understand that she's reluctant to give that up, even as it becomes worse and worse. But it doesn't really feel like that. It just feels like Sebastian behaves like a stuck-up brat the whole time, and there is a moment when Maya tries to leave him, but you sort of think, you should have done that a long time ago, I don't know why it's gotten to this point. That brings me to my least favourite part of this series, and that is that it has this bizarre political overtone that would have felt preachy if it had even been that competent, but it wasn't. It wasn't even good enough to be preachy. That's what it should be aiming for. That was just bizarre and so pointless. At the end of all of these political scenes, you haven't learned anything about the characters, you haven't learned anything about politics, the only time you learn anything is about Sebastian, and even then, it makes his character even worse, and our belief in Maya's love for him even weaker. What I'm trying to get at is that it never really felt like a downward spiral for Sebastian. It felt like he was always like that, he was always going to do something like that, and that he was entirely to blame for almost all of his circumstances and his behaviour. With this kind of story, what I like to see is a descent in the character, and a certain inevitability, almost as if they were just forced into that situation, and nothing they did 
was entirely their fault. It was sort of everything leading up to that. Something like the assassination of Richard Nixon with Sean Penn does that really, really well. I didn't see any of that here. But it's not all bad. There was definitely some stuff to like here, not least of which the best Swedish swearing rant that I've ever seen. Swedish swearing rant? Dude, that is extremely niche. Who's a hipster now? Yeah, okay, I know, but that scene is actually really intense, and the actress who plays Maya nails it. From her, it's actually a really good performance all round. It's just a bit of a shame that she didn't have more of a proper character to work with, but that bit was awesome. For fun, holla do, poor man! <laughs> the rest of the quality of the series is found mainly in the last two episodes. I know it sounds strange, but those episodes spend about half their time in the courtroom, and we actually should have seen more courtroom drama from start to finish in the series, because those episodes, particularly the last episode, which is probably most of the time in the courtroom, are the best bits. In these courtroom dramas, there's almost always a point at which a witness is pressed on what is essentially the crux of the case, except that it never feels realistic or convincing, because we know that actually that much weight could not rest on a single point in the case. It just doesn't work like that in real life, and nothing's that clear-cut, least of all the law. In Quicksand, no spoilers, it's a little bit different, that's all I'm gonna say. The weight of everything, the way it's acted, the script, the dialogue, everything just feels really, really good. This is kind of like Sweden's version of YOU CAN'T HANDLE THE TRUTH! So would I recommend this series? Overall, it's not the worst thing you can watch. There's far worse things on Netflix, and parts of this are as quality as you will find anywhere. But it's the courtroom scenes that really stand out. And that makes sense, because when I looked up the author, it turns out she holds a senior position at a Swedish law firm. So it's like it's her native language. Those are the bits that come naturally to her. But the rest of the script really felt like a first draft. When it comes to European Netflix originals, it feels like a lot of them still have a lot of sorting out to do. I would say that many of them suffered from exactly the same problem. That is, there were moments of extreme quality, but then there are some really bizarre debutantish choices that let the whole thing down. I would say the same thing about Border Town, the Finnish one, Case, the Icelandic one, Border Liner, the Norwegian one, uh, Perfume, the German one, definitely. Uh, La Treve, the Belgian one, which was more on the sucky side of things, but there were still moments of goodness there. I would even controversially say the same thing about Dark, the German one that is held up to be the best European series ever. I don't think they nailed everything quite as well as it could have been. I still think the best European stuff I've seen in the last five years is either nothing to do with Netflix, like Trapped from Iceland, or not originally Netflix and later picked up, like Money Heist from Spain. Don't hear me saying that everything on Netflix sucks, I just think that their financial model isn't always the best for making the best production decisions. Speaking of production decisions, you should subscribe because I make more of these foreign series reviews all the time, so if you appreciate all things foreign and language related, then hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, I will reply. Hur som helst, jag hoppas att ni uppskattade videon och då ses vi nästa gång. Hej då!